Welcome, dear students, to TEDx Education. We are going to focus on enzymes in this episode, and our main focus is going to be on the mechanism of action of the enzyme by the lock and the key hypothesis. The lock and the key hypothesis. So we say this hypothesis this tries to explain how the enzyme this is the rock and the key a hypothesis how the enzyme and the substrate combine to bring about catalysis. So this hypothesis it is not up to the level of the theory, but it is an explanation put forward by some scholars that tries to explain how does the enzyme and the substrate interact to bring about catalysis. So you can say, according to this, according to this hypothesis, the rock and the key are analogous to the substrate and the enzyme. How are they analogous? Analogous means something that works like the other, even if they are not of the same structure. So you can open quotes and say, like how each rock can it be open it by a specific key that has a configuration that has a configuration complementary to the key fit so this is where the analogous part comes in that even an enzyme has a specific site has a specific site where a specific substrate with a specific shape let's use the word configuration with a specific configuration can it fit so that's where an our analogous thinking comes in from that a specific key 
opens a certain lock and also a specific enzyme a specific enzyme can act on a specific substrate so we can conclude here with even our note here and say this explains why enzymes are specific in nature. Specific in nature means each enzyme works on a specific substrate. Why a specific substrate? In most cases, the substrates are organic materials which have a specific, specific bodies and even specific atoms. Let's illustrate this organic key hypothesis illustration so this is what it says if this is the enzyme which we are going to denote as E we call this part the allosteric part allosteric site and now we call this part the active site. Then this is our enzyme. The enzyme will have a configuration. The enzyme will have a configuration this is our rather substrate. Now, it will have a configuration that can fit into the active site of the enzyme to come up with something like this. So we shall come up with a structure That the enzyme and the substrate in their mode of action they form partial bodies that now we go further. So this is our substrate, that is our enzyme. So when they meet, of course, partial bonds are going to be established in that region where we have called it an active site this we shall refer to it as enzyme substrate complex enzyme substrate complex this complex will go further and break it down remember that Enzymes are catalysts and catalysts remain unchanged at the end of the reaction. So this enzyme that has remained behind is free to bind with the other substrates of the same kind. But the substrate will no longer be now a substrate but rather products. It will have been broken down and this is our enzyme which remains any changed at the end of the reaction. So what is behind the formation of bonds between the enzyme and the substrate? Is to weaken the bonds in the substrate such that the bonds can disintegrate and we form products. So that is the lock and the key hypothesis which tries to explain how the enzyme and the substrate interact. They interact like how a log interacts with a key and each log having a specific key that opens it. 
Likewise, an enzyme has a specific site, we call it active site, where a certain substrate can feed. And it is helping us to explain why enzymes are specific in nature. So let's come back and look at the induced feed hypothesis.